Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this webinar, Teaching Science with Activities. Uh, the school year is passing, and perhaps we are asking for new ideas to project our English project. This time, we will analyze uh, some projects to relate English uh, with science. Each student will be a kid or a junior scientist. We will develop many lab and more new projects, which we will make learning a meaningful experience. I have the honor to introduce Mr. Freddy Campos. He is an academic consultant. Freddy, welcome. Okay, Jesse and everybody, um, good afternoon. I'm really, really happy to be again with you in another webinar. And well, for today, we have a very interesting topic, which is teaching um, activities or teaching science with different activities. Now, before I start with my presentation, I'm gonna give you a question and you don't have to answer in this moment, but this is a question for you to think about during the presentation and at the end, you can think if your answer is correct or maybe your answer was not the one. When we are teaching science, Listen to the question. When we are teaching science, do we teach grammar? So that's the question for you. That's the question for you, my dear teachers. Do we teach grammar with science? And well, let's check out this presentation that I have for you. And at the end, you can see if we teach grammar using science or we don't teach science. And we don't teach grammar using science. So well, I have this presentation for you. I would like you to have uh, a piece of paper or maybe a notebook where you can actually take some notes because some of the activities over here are very, very related to our books, New Learning Science, but also those are activities that you can use if you want to incorporate, if you want to have science inside your classes. So, well, let's get it started. And today we have teaching science with um, activities. I'm gonna be your host today, Freddy Campos, and it's a complete pleasure for me to show you something that it will be very important and very meaningful for all of you. As, as, in, every, um, as in every webinar or every presentation that we, that we offer you, my dear teachers, we normally present the problem. We're gonna have some strategies that you can use. Um, these strategies are very, very related to science uh, with the teaching of science, but also you can use them in your uh, personal classes. We're gonna show you um, some lesson plans. Also the Greenish Now, this is our, let's say our new platform where you're gonna see a lot of advantages you already saw them in the video, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit deeper uh, with all the information that you can see in this platform. And finally, something that is important and that we use in our classes are the worksheets. The worksheets are very fundamental in all our classes. Well, it is very important. We as teachers, we need to show our students the learning goals. As we are teaching, we need to show them the learning goals. And well, today, the learning goal is to apply different strategies and techniques using science projects, lesson plans, and experiments in my English classes. So in here, this is the learning goal. And at the end of this presentation, you will have some simple strategies, simple techniques, some lesson plans that you can apply in your science classes. So well, for the first part, remember, and I want you to get involved in this webinar. We are talking about, we are talking about um, teaching science using, okay? Teaching science using different, uh, different activities. And the first and the very important question that you can, that you can ask yourself is, can I make my students think as a scientist? Because I'm teaching science. 
I mean, my students are learning the science that possibly they know in Spanish, but now I'm teaching that using English. But now, can I involve my students, okay, all my students to think as a scientist? Well, our books and some of the techniques that I will help you and I will show you today, our books help you, your teacher, to make your student think as a scientist. And that is one of the key aspects to have a science class. Now, how can we, maybe you tell me, okay, but how can we make, or how can you make the students think as a scientist? Let me let you know. Over here, we have the critical thinking. This is something important in, when we are teaching, this is super important, the critical thinking. And then it says, making your student think about different situations in life as a scientific person is a key element to activate, listen to this part, to activate the learning process and reach your learning goal. So taking all the situations in life into science. Using simple questions, that is one of the techniques, using simple questions, pictures, videos, or real objects will help you engage the students and reach your learning goals. Notice that in my two paragraph, I present these two phrases, um, engage the students and reach your learning goals. Now, if we continue, the students can develop, the student can develop some science skills. Notice that in here, this is not about um, this is not about grammar. So I'm giving you some tips. This is not completely about grammar, but it says the students can develop some science skills to have a better learning process and reach the goals of your class. Look at the following questions, and I want you to think about these possible questions. Okay, about the strategy that I told you at the beginning, making some questions making your students think as a scientist. And over here, we have some simple questions. Notice that in here, notice that in here, these questions are related to the topic. But in here, I, I'm gonna give you different questions, all right? I'm gonna give you different, different questions. Now, the question number one, do marbles breathe? Imagine if we're talking about living and non-living objects or living and non-living now you made the questions to your students and they and you can ask them hey do marble breathe and maybe they can answer maybe yes maybe no maybe they can give you some example but teacher but they don't have lungs like us so the idea is that with these questions we are preparing our students to the final part or the middle part of our class Another question that you can make your students is, do cats jump with two or four legs? What do you know in your house? I don't know, if you have some cats, how do they jump? With the two legs or with the four legs? This is a very good question that we can ask our students. Now, why can the fish not be out of water? So why is the total environment or the complete environment of a fish to be in water, to be at the ocean, to be in the beach, okay? Why is it not possible for him, for the fish in this case, to be out of water? And the last one, is water important for plants? So we can make these type of questions to our students so we can involve into any class that we are gonna be teaching using science. Then we have, and this is something that I would like to share with you, uh, possibly this could be helpful uh, just in case you want to have some task organization. And this is something really, really good. And it says the teacher can use this structure to establish the goals the student will accomplish at the end of the activity or the class. When we are presenting, one, one, of, the, one of the strategies that we can use about task organization is that when we are presenting the goals to our students, we need to present them into a proper way. So the student can understand what I need from him or from her 
And the idea is that the final result has to be the goal I presented to him, all right? It is important to synchronize the activities and goals, the activities and goals based on your lesson. Lesson, activities, and goals, they have to be connected. If they are not connected, you're gonna get different results and your students will feel like, mm, I'm not getting, I mean, I'm not understanding what I'm doing. And this is an example to guide you, my dear teacher, when it comes to design your plan for science classes in English. This is an example. I'm not telling you that this is the only, uh, this is the only structure that you will use, but this is just an example. Notice in this part, okay, this is a type of task, task organization. And notice that in this part, you have the class, the goal, the task, and the indicators of achievement. It could be many indicators, but in this case, I just put just only one. I'm teaching third grade. This is a topic for third grade. And then we have the topic that is matter and energy. This is very typical when we are teaching science. And then we have the lesson, the matter and energy, and in every place I go. This is the topic that I took from my uh, my book and then I present the goal and it says the goal the child should be unable to identify some household appliances that use electricity that use electricity and then in the task notice that, it, that in here in the task I'm expecting I'm giving my expectations about the activities I will present to the students and their result of my student according to that activity, all right? And obviously the indicators, uh, it, this is telling me, okay, the teacher, or, or in this case, when the student, uh, when the student is completing the task, this is the indicator I receive, okay? My student is understanding, my student is completing, or in this case, my understanding is selecting properly all the household appliances, all right? So this is just an example, but I have another one. I have another example for you. This is another example that we can use. In this case, I'm teaching fifth grade in elementary school. And over here, the topic is weather and seasons. Weather and season. As you can see, connection. Weather and season, they are connected. And we have the lesson. The lesson says that the weather is bipolar. It changes every time. All right, notice that I present the goal, I present the task, I present the indicators of achievement. So this is one example that you can use, especially if you want to present your project to the institution, and if you want to present this project to your students, this is an example how you can organize very well and you can present them to your students, all right? So this is just a simple idea. Please, it would be great, my dear teacher, that you are watching me. Uh, it would be great if you can um, prepare. I mean, you can take this activity and make it uh, to yourself. I mean, like you prepare it according to the level of your student and according to what you want to get from them. Then we have some science skills, all right? Remember, we are not teaching grammar. Remember, we are teaching vocabulary, but we don't make complete emphasis in teaching grammar. We want our students to think as a scientist. So one of the science skills, this is, let's say the top five, there are many science skills. Actually, our book, New Learning Science, presents uh, many other science skills that your students will develop through the complete school year. So one of them is the observation, prediction, questions, investigation, and then experiment. Obviously, when you are making your student understand about the activity, they observe, all right? They make predictions. Remember when I told you, hey, do Marvel breathe? And one of the students, possibly, one of your students says, yeah, teacher, but they don't have, but they don't have lungs. That is one of, that is one of the predictions that it could be one of the questions. Then investigation, your student will investigate more about why is this happening? Why the fish is all the time inside? 
the ocean, inside the sea. Why? Why is the fish all the time in there? And then make it some experiment. Maybe he says, okay, so the fish is inside. What about the cats? What about the, the what about the dogs? Is it possible for them to be inside the um, they could be in water? So they can make some experiment. Well, I hope that they don't do this one that I'm telling you, but I want you to keep in mind what I want you to get when we talk about science and skills, that your students can actually uh, put into practice what you are teaching using science. Then we have another technique. This one is really good, the science facts, because with the science facts, we are presenting the topic that we, are, that we will be discussing to our students. One of them would be introducing fun on interesting science facts about your general topic will help you to activate and prepare your students for the rest of the class. When you're giving them, this is, we could say that this is a warm up activity. When you are presenting uh, this topic, uh, you are actually preparing your, your student that the complete class will be about this topic, all right? Because it says, it is considered a type of warm up activity because the student can learn and discover new things from this part. When you're teaching the facts, obviously you're gonna be teaching something that is real. You are not teaching something that is fake. So you're teaching something that is real and they will be like, oh, oh, this is good. Oh, I know that. Maybe your student know that information. Maybe your student doesn't know that information. If he doesn't or she doesn't, yeah, this is the time for him or for that student to understand and comprehend new facts about science. I give you, uh, let's see, two, two examples. Let me show you some examples. Imagine we're talking about electricity. Electricity is a natural topic when we talk about science. This is very, very typical. And let me show you this, this fact. Obviously, my dear teachers, some of the activities that I will be showing to you in this presentation, um, they are based or they are presenting especially to you. What I want you to put into practice is analyzing my topic, analyzing my strategy or my technique and put it into yourself. Prepare that activity according to the level of your students, all right? So in here, we, we are talking about the electric eels. I don't know if you, if you have seen uh, this animal, but this animal is, is very popular. And obviously the student will say, okay, can I have electricity from a fish? Is it possible teacher? When you are presenting the facts, it's not that your student, okay, when you're looking to your student, it's not that they will learn the fact like letter by letter is that when you are presenting the fact, your student can make you questions and maybe he says question to himself, like, can the fish produce electricity? Is that possible? Teacher, but I have a fish in my house. Can I have electricity with that fish? Okay, so the idea is that when we're presenting the fact, we are making our students understand, realize something important According to, the level, according to the topic we will be discussing. Let me show you another one, another electricity fact. Okay, this is very popular in, let's say in many countries. One way to produce electricity if, is by the word hydropower. Obviously, we are not going to show the hydropower to our students, but look at the picture. I want you to focus on the picture and it says a process that generates electricity by using water to spin turbines attached to generators, all right? So when we're showing this picture and we are showing the facts to our students, they can understand, maybe not, not at the first time, but maybe later they can understand how water is, how electricity is produced and why water is so important for the electricity. This is one of the facts, okay? And now I have another one, which is weather. Remember that in one of the previous uh, slides that I show you, 
uh, you saw about the weather and the seasons, all right? And who doesn't know a rainbow? Again, I, I think we have seen all the time in our life a rainbow, all right? And look at this, a rainbow is a multicolored arc that forms in the sky. So maybe we can start discussing with our students, what about the colors of the rainbow, all right? Which, which are the different colors that, that we see in the rainbow? Now, when, maybe your student can, can, can tell you, teacher, but when can the rainbow appear? When can we see the rainbow? What, what is the situation that we can see the, the rainbow? Then another weather fact is that, talking again about the rainbow, that I don't know if you know this, but I always made this question to myself. A rainbow is not an object. It cannot be approached or physically touched. I mean, it's impossible. I mean, you can watch it. It's a complete miracle from God, God Almighty. It's a complete miracle from him, but it's not, it's, it is something that you cannot touch. It is something that you cannot approach to it. All right, so this is an interesting fact that you can tell to your students. And believe me, once you are teaching this, your students, as soon as they, as they see a rainbow, they will, maybe they will tell to their parents or they will tell to anyone surround, surround them, hey, did you know that a rainbow, it's impossible to be touched or it's impossible to get approached? I mean, you, you don't know the beginning. And obviously, you don't know the ending of a rainbow. Then when we continue, we have the part of picturing. This is another technique that you can use. When we are talking about picturing, very similar when we are teaching, um, when we are teaching adjectives, it will be a little similar when we are teaching nationalities because of the flag. Well, showing your student pictures about the topic you will present is a great, it's a great strategy because not many words, listen to this, not many words will be used from the teachers. In some occasions, the teacher is speaking too much and we let few, um, few minutes of participation to our students. What we are expecting by using pictures is that our student can recognize things in that picture and they can actually say, hey, I know this. Hey, I think this is this, all right? They can present their own point of view. And I give you two examples. One of them, okay, imagine we are teaching plants, all right? We are teaching flowers or roses or lilies. And then we're, we're teaching plants where you can actually have any fruit or you can have any food. So they can see the differences between a flower and in this case, I don't know, that would be the banana plant, all right? So they can see the differences or they can present just only one difference. And this is letting you to start talking about your topic in the presentation, all right? So using the pictures, we let your student think about the differences, in this case, about these two pictures. Look at this one, talking about the weather, all right? Talking about the weather. They can actually understand when it goes up and when it goes down, what is the temperature, all right? Sometimes, some people, they don't know this, and uh, they don't know this difference at all. But by using the picture, they can understand that when it is high, it's a little bit hot. And when it is down, it's a little bit cold. And also they can talk about the different places inside your country. They can talk about the different places where the temperature is really hot and where the temperature is really cold. Another technique, and in this case, we go with the lesson plans, all right? Now the lesson plans has to be well prepared, all right? Has to be well prepared because remember that we are teaching science. Remember, keep this in mind. We're teaching science to our students and we want them to think as a scientist. We want them to think as a scientist. This lesson plan will help you design your own plans for teaching science. What I'm teaching, what I'm teaching, what I'm giving you in this moment, my dear teachers, what I'm giving you in this moment, it is something 
very dedicated to the teachers. But when it comes to the students, you have to make some, uh, let's see, some deleting of some words, all right? Because most of these activities are related to you. Here you will see the process for a science, a very simple science class. This is the topic, my dear teacher. This is the topic from seeds to plants. We're gonna see the process when we have the seed, all right? And then the final result, which is a plant, all right? And it says, the student love to observe, remember observation, one of the science skills, their environment. Invite them, invite all of your students to discover how seed grow and develop into plants with this lesson in this case. So what do we need? Remember, okay, remember that at the beginning of, of the presentation, I told you the learning goal. And in this case, a student will be able to identify the process of growth and development from seed to a plant. Remember, they will see how the seed is presented and what is the final result with the plant. But in this case, that is the plant. We need some material, guys. We need some materials. Now, before you see the word worships, one, number one and number two, maybe you tell me, okay, and well, but how can I get this material? Don't worry, I will let you know something really, really important and, and something that you can use where you can have these worksheets and other, all right? So one of the materials is uh, two worksheets that we're gonna be using, pencils, newspaper, bean seed, not a specific, the one, that you can tell your student to have. Can, bottle, and water. Obviously, water is super important. A live plant. In this case, a live plant, because you will see, but why do, why do I need a live plant? You will see it. And a bag filled with soil, all right? So in this case, we had the introduction to our topic. In this case, these are some activities that you need to do, or that you need to perform inside the class so your student can basically start to be ready to change or to see the procedure between uh, from seed to the plant. And it says, ask the student to come together as a group, then identify where plants come from and what plants need to grow. And in the other hand, show the students a live plant, as I told you before, and in the other hand, and in the other hand, show a student a few seeds, all right? So they can see few seeds, so they can see the differences, the seed and the life plant, all right? And let them know that the goal, that the final result that we're gonna have today is we're gonna see today, and we're gonna be learning how seeds grow and develop into plant by using what? One of the uh, materials that you ask your students, soil, water, sunshine, that is already over here, and the carbon dioxide. Now, we had the introduction, that is the part of the introduction, and now it comes the teacher modeling. Now, this is you organizing all the information that your students need to do so they can reach your final goal. Then it says, inform the student that all plants start off as a seed. Let them know that, hey, this is the beginning. The life plant I have over here, this is the beginning. So let them know that there is a beginning and there is an ending, all right? So notice in here, we have four different, um, let's say different organization that you have to complete with your students, all right? And notice that we mentioned all the material that we need to use. Let me tell you, the material that I'm, that I'm telling you, that I'm showing you, it's, it's something that is not expensive and it is something that you can find everywhere. So I'm not giving you science like a very sophisticated, no, I'm, I'm giving you some science ideas, something really, that I mean, something that you can do and your student can find, all right? Then we go with the guide practice, or in this case, the guided practice. We present, we help our students, and we tell them what to do, all right? And then with the guided practice, 
we are working as a monitor. You know that that, that is one of the characteristics of a good teacher, which is monitoring the behavior of the students inside the class or inside the activity, okay? And in this case, we give them the activities to do, all right? We show them, hey, this is what we are going to do. And you will see, you will be involved in the procedure from seed to a plant, okay? So look at this, something that is not so difficult to check it out, to practice, with our students. And notice that we're using all of the material we request to our students. This is the guided practice number two. In some occasions, when, uh, when you have the opportunity to prepare your lesson plan, depending on the strategy you use, it could be a little bit longer or it could be uh, shorter, let's say like that. Well, in this case, we have Different, different activities that we're gonna be using in the guided practice. But the idea is that the procedure has to be completed, all right? It's not something that you're gonna, you're gonna finish it like in the half, no. You have to complete it, all uh, your lesson plan, so your student can see the result, or at least provide enough material or enough time so your student can complete them, all right? Obviously, from seed to plants is not something that you're gonna see the plant the same day, but you're gonna be guiding your student and telling them, hey, that this is the process, and that in five days period or in six day periods or in the following week, you will see the final results. Let them know that they will find a result about this experiment or about this practice that they are, they are using. And finally, the independent work. When we're talking about independent work, it could be something that it could be sent to house as homework or as, as an assignment, or it could be something, if you have the time in your classes, it is something that you can prepare to actually certify all the knowledge they have in the first part of the class. And it says uh, to work with the worksheets, that's why it's super important to have worksheets to complement your your class and this is i i have the two worksheets for you my dear teacher this is one samples of the worksheets that i was telling you one of the question is how do potatoes grow notice that in here the student has the chance okay uh obviously here in peru we have uh, a variety of potatoes we have a variety of potato here in peru all right and notice that in here, we are making our student think, like what is the process? What is the process? Okay, so notice that in here, we have the four pieces, all right? We have the four pieces. So we're gonna make our students use their scissors and then they will organize what is first, second, third, and then fourth. And they will see what is the procedure. And they will say, teacher, we are in this process. They will let you know that they are in this process. And when you reach the final one, six or five days or the following week, you will say, hey, teacher, we are in this part, okay? And the second worship that, uh, the second worship that I told you is actually the plant. And it says, circle the items that this plant needs to survive. With these worksheets, we are telling our student that, hey, this that you have over here, this seed or this experiment that you did need something specific or need a lot of things in a specific. And notice that we have the plant, we have the soil, sunshine, the hammer, the moon, and the rain. So your student will think like, okay, what is important for the plant? And they will let you know and they will say, ah, teacher, well, we need to put it where the sun, where the sun sees, they will tell you like that, where the sun sees the plant. But teacher, be careful that if it's raining tomorrow, be careful that it doesn't get a lot of water because it will die, teacher. Okay. So when they tell you this, believe me, believe me that your students basically understood all the information you needed to say with that. Then we have another one, which is explore the scissors. 
the seasons, all right? And in this case, we're talking about the weather, all right? We're talking about the weather, we're talking about the season, all right? And well, in this lesson, we will see how to explore the different ways people celebrate weather. Now, notice in here, again, I'm not putting, I'm not writing present simple, present continuous, um, maybe past perfect. No, I'm not putting that. I'm not paying attention to that part in a specific. What I'm paying attention is that how my student can think as a scientist and how my students can actually complete and reach the goals that I presented for the class. In this case, we explore, explore the seasons. We have the learning goals. And the idea is that the students will identify the four seasons and describe events that it is very common in those, uh, in those seasons. So we had the season three change worships. Then we had season and weather worship. We had tape, glue, and scissors. Every house in Peru has a tape, glue, and scissor, and around the world. Crayons, color pencils, and paper, all right? So you can see simple materials, all right? Options, okay, like the introduction for our topic. Now this in here, raise a simple conversation on the different seasons. The four seasons, if they know the four seasons, what activity do we do in each season, if they remember, what holidays are there, Maybe uh, maybe some of the students will tell you that. And what experience do you have during a particular season? What a student? And give them some important um, information about the seasons. The season reflects how solar energy is distributed to the earth. And it is important to have the seasons as a way of letting life be possible on earth. So maybe they will tell you, teacher, what happened in the other planets? Teacher. In the other planets, do they celebrate Halloween? Or do they celebrate Thanksgiving? Or do they celebrate Christmas? Maybe they will ask you those questions. We don't know. Teacher, in that planet, is it raining in this moment? Maybe they will make you with, with these questions, all right? Because we're talking about the season. And we were mentioning, this is the way how the earth can actually be. And, and we can be on the earth. The teaching modeling, remember, now this is the moment when you are giving more instruction, when you are presenting the students that now we are going to be working on this activity and we're going to understand the different um, weather, the different seasons, the different celebrations according to the seasons, all right? Then we have the guided practice. All right, in this case, we're gonna be helping ourselves with the board. And maybe you tell me, hey, remember that we are teaching virtual classes. Well, when we're using any application to teach our classes through virtually, don't worry that all of them present to have a board on your classes. So we using a board, you can, uh, as it says in it, write the different types of weather that your students experience in each season pair the students up. Okay, now let's discuss what experience or what do you feel when it's really hot? What do you feel when it's really cold? When it is raining, all right? So they can feed you with that information. All right, so remember, this is the guided practice. And in this case, we don't have a guided practice number two. We go directly to the independent work. Now, with the independent work, we're gonna be using the word chips. We're gonna be using the word chips. Remember, if you have the time, do it at, at the school, do it uh, during the class. But if you don't have enough time, just send it as an assignment. And look at this, guys. The independent work is that is the student to complete the two word chips about season as a complementary exercise to reinforce the last activity. Here, we can see um, the trees, right? Normally, when, you are, when we are teaching weather, when we are teaching seasons, a tree has to be in all of the presentations. I don't know why, but normally a tree appears in all of the presentations. In here, we have the spring, summer, then we have fall and winter. Now, what do you think the student will do in this part? Okay, we're gonna have some leaves, 
over here, we we're going to have some leaves. That's why we need to use the scissors. And in this case, the student will actually identify the colors of the leaves, what leaves in a specific go with the four trees I let you know in this case. Okay, we have the four, the four season, we have the four trees. So your students can, uh, can complete this part. And finally, uh, your student will understand when it is winter, spring, summer, fall, what um, activities we normally practice in these weather situations or in this case, in this season, all right? Very simple, a matching, all right? Using different colors, they can identify this part. So with this, my dear teachers, okay? With this part, my dear teachers, you can certify that your lesson plan is completed because they will be working at home and they will be like selecting and obviously, this is going to be a very huge success for your class. Now, now, okay. What I'm going to show you, it's something that I really feel proud of. It's something that if I had had maybe two or three years ago when, when I was teaching, nowadays I'm doing um, other type of activities, uh, trying to improve. But if I had had this uh, platform before, wow, wow. I mean, what I'm going to show you right now, I'm going to show you some screenshots, um, are the different things that you as a teacher using our books, the new learning signs in Norma, you will have a lot of activities that you are going to use in your classes. And let me tell you this, our platform is completely, let's say, um, presented, or it could be used virtually and face-to-face -face classes. You can use this platform if you are teaching virtually, like right now, or when you go to your classroom, you have the opportunity. What can you find, my dear teacher, what can we find in our platform Greenish now? Well. We're going to find the calendar, okay? And this is completely connected to Gmeet, to Google, uh, to Gmeet, to Microsoft Teams. And as you saw in the presentation before with the video, now it is connected to Zoom. The three most useful and the three most important uh, video conference application that you can use to teach your classes, we have the calendar completely ready. You don't have to present the link, you are going to set up the, the link and you're going to set up your classes. The future classes, you are gonna be able to set them up by using our calendar that is in our platform. Great updater, you're gonna have the platform that is completely ready and it's gonna be very similar to the one you use in your, in, in your school, that is your, um, to introduce the grades but it's going to be in the platform. I mean, you're gonna have everything that you need in our platform. The owner role that you will see in few seconds, the owner role will help you because our platform, wow, it's completely intelligent. Obviously, artificial intelligence, but it's super intelligent that it, in this owner role, we let you know which student is having more participation using the platform. Participants, you're going to have the connection to your coordinators or to your principal. You're going to have the connection to your parents, okay? Because our platform is not only for the students, but also the parents will see what is happening in that platform. Obviously, important connection with our students. And finally, the connection with the teachers, because in some occasions, we want to let them know that we want to do something and we want the help from them. So in here, you're gonna have the connection with your teacher. What else? Okay, I'm not finished. What else? You're gonna have the digital books. In this case, we're talking about new learning science, our book from Norma, but we have all the editions in those, um, in that platform, we have all the editions. And in this case, the most important in this moment is new learning science. You will have the lesson plans, the one that I showed you before, it's an example that we can give you. But in the platform, you're gonna have all the lesson plans 
from all the units. Okay, you're gonna have all the information in there. The attendance, you're not, you're not gonna be using your, your piece of paper because the attendance is ready. And the attendance with all the students that exist in that school. Online activities creator, you're gonna have a forum. You're gonna have a forum. Forums nowadays are super important because the student can express themselves just type in the information and they can feel more confident using the photo, okay? And digital resources that obviously are completely printable. Digital resources that you can project using your video conference. But in this case, when we come back to our classes, to our classroom, hopefully you can actually photocopy them. Here you will see what we have to make your classes much better. Your classes are super excellent, my dear teacher. Your classes are super great. But with this platform, we are actually telling you, hey, we're gonna make your classes even better because the resources that we are offering you from Norma are one of the best. Now, what can you see? Remember that I told you about the calendar? This is the calendar over here. This is the calendar over here. And in this calendar, you're gonna see, notice that in here, November 12th, okay, the science webinar. I already made my reservation. And this is the calendar where you're gonna see all the information, this is November, 2020. You're gonna see all the information that you already reserved with your students, okay? And if you see like on this part, okay, on your right, Okay, you're gonna see the symbols. I'm pretty sure you, rec you recognize these symbols over here, okay? Now, later from the calendar, I can make, as I told you before, I can create an event to my students and I can select the day, like today, and the final, the end of the day, I can put the title of that activity, okay? And I can put any description about this activity. Now, this is the best part when I'm reserving or when I'm booking an activity. I can book because in some occasions we need to talk to our parents, okay? We need parents meeting. Well, if I'm doing that, I'm gonna be sending this information only to the, to the parents. But if I need this to my students, I'm gonna be sending this to my students. If I want to make a meeting, if we have any coordinator or if we have any principal watching this webinar, um, well, you can have a meeting using your colleagues and you can make the reservation using the platform, all right? And if you want to make it public, like maybe like the opening days or the closing days that is very popular in this country, all right, you can make it public. So teachers, students, and also parents can enter to this activity. Let me show you now, in this case, how it would appear once it is already reserved. This is the way how it would appear, okay? When? Thursday, November 12th, okay? Like today, all day, teaching, teaching signs using different um, activities. Then, as I told you before, hey, you can reserve all your classes, you can book all your classes, and you can make the reservation using Google Meet, using Microsoft Teams, and you can also use Zoom, all right? Obviously, when you're making, you making a reservation in any of these platforms, I told you before, they request for any, um, any Gmail or any, any mail, so they can make the correct, um, they, can, they can make the correct, um, in this case with Google Meet, all right? Google Meet asks me for my email so they can select, hey, this is the email. And notice in this case, okay, if you follow me, I'm putting science webinar, teaching science, then public, that is basically for everybody. And when I click on add, it appears over here. Now, look at this bar, guys. Look at this bar, my dear teacher. In here, Google Meet class video. It's already reserved. And you know what? as this platform is completely intelligent, all right? This platform knows that this is for your students and it will send immediately to the platform of every single student. Then 
we have over here the grade updater. All right. Notice, as I told you before, look, new learning signs. Okay, it's already here. Okay, it's already here. I looked for this part. I'm not gonna be showing you another book, but I'm gonna be showing you how you can um, update all your grades according to the book that you are teaching. And in this case, new learning signs, you're gonna have the different quarters. Obviously, this is completely customized, all right? Because this is according to the process or the structure of the institution. But in here, you're gonna have the chance. Now, let's imagine I click on any new learning signs and I go to new learning signs one. And in here, it would tell me all of the students that I have, all of the students that I have, and I can actually type all the grades using this platform. Notice that it's not necessary, okay? Notice that it's not necessary to use uh, any other platform because in the one that is from Norma, you're gonna have everything. Then we have over here, uh, let me go back for a moment. In this part, I don't know if you can follow me um, on top, on your left, it says export to a spreadsheet. Obviously, this is Excel. Now, I can download this information because maybe my coordinator tells me, teacher, I need you, I need you to have all the grades in Excel. <laughs> okay, sometimes it's Excel is a little bit difficult, but you know what? The platform has been thinking about this. And once you need all the information that is on the platform, you need it using Excel, you already have it over here. The owner role, remember, I told you before about the owner role, okay? In this part, my dear teachers, you're gonna have the owner role, which is, yeah, which is telling you or which will tell you to your coordinator, to the principal and to you, my dear teacher, which student is using properly the platform? Which student is uh, entering to the bottom? Which student is following all the indications that you are saying? Which student is actually reviewing completely the book out of the time of classes? Because during the time of classes, obviously your, your student will be using them. But what about like at this time, like in the afternoon, like in the evening, where they are not having classes. Well, this platform will let you know how good your student is working using the platform. Then we have the participants, as I told you before, the connection. Remember that you can, you can send uh, any information, any important information to the coordinator, to the parents, to the students, to the teacher. You can set up um, any meeting with any of them. And in here, you can see uh, all of the options that you can have. Now, imagine if I click in, in students and it will show me all the grades. Now, if you notice over here, it takes me until 11. And you tell me, but you know what? When we are teaching elementary, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Why 11? Because this platform can be used not only for elementary school, but also for secondary level. And I'm telling you, the books that I'm going to show you, or the goods, the books we have we have been talking, which is learning, new learning science, could be used not only for elementary, but also you can use them for secondary level. Now, if I click on grade number one, okay, it will take me to the lesson plan. Now, this is the richest part from our platform. In this case, we have the lesson plan. Notice, if you follow me in this picture, notice that we have nine lessons or nine units, all right? Nutrition is necessary, a place to live, relationship and how your body works, exploring body system, matter and energy. Remember, in previous slides, we talked about matter and energy. And then we reach until the unit number nine. Please follow me on the top, on your, on your left, new learning science three, okay? Now, what do I have? What do I have in the unit number one? Well, look at this, my dear teacher. We have three lessons, animal nutrition, living things change, and energy flows. Those are the three lessons, okay? Nine units, three lessons in every unit. 
But now look at this. Below the lessons, we have unit evaluation, extra labs, posters, and a study map. Okay? So look at all of the activities that you will see in this part. Okay? So if I click on one of the lessons, lesson one, animal nutrition, and it says learning outcomes. Okay? Those are the results that we are expecting from this lesson. And look at this, my dear teachers. It will show you all the learning outcomes. The science learning skills. Notice that we already talked about that, the learning skills, but also the academic language. In here, you will see how your results will be in the class. You will see the future, basically. You will see the future in this part because in here, this is the final part of, of, the, of your classes. And this is the way how you will be finishing your classes. Then we have the warm up. If you follow me, please, we have the warm up. And in the warm up, we have an intro and we have a digital activity. Uh, I noticed that possibly it's a little bit small, the letter, all right? But when you are checking the, when you are checking the platform through your computer, uh, you will see this information uh, a little bit clearer. All right, so we had a warm up, which is the intro and the digital activity. All right, then we had the triple P, presentation, practice, and production. Now, personally, I like to say performance because it is the moment when, when our students put into practice everything we have given them, all right? But in here we have the presentation. And notice that in the presentation we have three. All right. We have three parts. Okay. And we have the digital activities and we have an extra activity. And normally when we are teaching any, uh, any topic, when we are teaching any class, we normally start by telling our student, please, let's go to page number five. Okay. Because in page number five, we have a very interesting picture that is going to help me and my students understand what the class is about, okay? So in this case, the presentation, in all these three steps with the digital activity and the extra activity, the teacher will guide the students to see what is going to happen in this class. The student will have some instructions that she or he will follow, so the student can say, oh my God, so today we're talking about energy and matter energy and matter. Then we have the practice. And look at this. <laughs> a lot of activities that we can use in practice in the practice section. We have extra activities, the equip lab, digital activities, and extra activity. With the practice, which is could be control or less control, in here we are giving you different, let's say different strategies that you can use so you can put into practice all the activities and all the activities and your students will say, okay, we're doing this because we practice that. We saw that in the, in the presentation. So I'm following all of the ideas. Your student will say that everything is connected. All right. Now look at this part. If you can follow me, my dear teachers, the Quip Lab. When we are talking about the Quip Lab, we are making our student more involved into science. This web lab will help you to put into practice any science situation presented in the book. And then we have the production, okay, which is the final one. And with the production or the performance, as you want to call it, we have some mini labs, some evaluation, and some final activities. With the production, just to finish our class. Now, all of these activities, my dear teachers, learning outcomes, warm ups, presentation, practice, and performance or production are presented to you to be used during your unit. Don't get a stress that you say, wow, this is a lot of information. No. Well, yes, this is a lot of information. But we're giving you a lot of resources. We are not giving you just the limit, the limited resources. We are giving you a lot of resources for you to say, well, I can use this because with this group, I think this strategy or this or this resource is going to be very, very good. So we're giving you a lot of uh, material 
extra material so you can take and select the one you prefer. Now we have the four of them. We need to evaluate our students. So what happened? We need to evaluate our students. So when it comes to evaluate our student, we have, remember, in this case, I'm showing you the production. Okay, still, let me go back for a moment with the production, with the mini lab. It also tells you the time that you're gonna take in this mini lab, and it tells you some questions, okay? Because we're talking about one part of the body, a very important part of the body. And then the students can actually see what is the position of that part of the body. Sometimes they hard. I don't know, some people, when it comes to the national anthem, some people, they, they do this. So they, they don't know what part of the body is the heart. Taking into consideration that when you are listening to your national anthem, you put your hand near your heart, okay? Well, in this, this is one of the mini lab that you will be using. And now we go to the part, we continue with the part of the production, we have the part of evaluation, and this is one of the greatest part too in the part of performance or production. I have another question for you, my dear teachers, and this is not for you to answer, okay? But this is for you to keep in mind. Do I make my students, I mean, do I have my students making self-evaluation? Or can my students make self-evaluation? Because you can make the corrections. I mean, you can tell them, hey, uh, Fernandez, remember that it is important to use this part class in general. It is super important to practice the pronunciation. It is important to know this and that. But can my student understand when she or he is making a mistake? Or can my student understand when I need to use some synonyms? Well, this is something that you can uh, that you can have in this part of, of the evaluation because you are making your student, you are making your student, yes, think about um, the proper and the best way to express themselves. Now, yes, we go to the part of unit evaluation. And part of unit evaluation is assign the quiz to um, evaluate the content of the unit. And now notice in there that we have like a, let's say like an icon in there, and it says quiz time unit one. Now look at this part, because with this, I had the two options. I can view my, I can view my, my exam, or I can schedule it. Remember, we are in virtual time. So maybe you can schedule this evaluation because maybe it is not necessary that your student has to be in the time of the class but it could be something that you can establish out of the time, out of the hour of the classes. So you can schedule it. But let's imagine you want to view the information. You want to view the test. Okay, what is going to happen in these tests? So maybe I can help my students if they have some questions. Well, this is one part. Noticing here that I have the new learning science. I'm still using new learning science. I haven't gone to another book. And we have the particular information, okay, uh, in this case. This information is, is in Spanish, so you can, uh, you can see the intro, all right? But the most important part is this. Over here, you're going to have how you will see the results. Remember that your students will take this evaluation virtually. I mean, we are, in this case, using the platform, so it means virtually. So you have, you're going to have a complete information about um, how many students attended twice, how many students attended thrice, how many students attended four times, and so on. Okay, you will see all the different details and you can say, uh, you can talk to your student, maybe to the parents, hey, Mr. Fernandez, your son has taken five, six attempts for this activity. When should you have been only two? What is happening? Is your student practicing? So your platform, Greenish Now, will be helping you in this part. Now, let's go with the test, okay? Let's go with the evaluation. Over there, we had some picture. Hey, look at this picture. Look at the picture number um, number five. Sorry, look at the picture number four. You see the process when it, grow, when it, when it grows up the, the plant. So in this, your student, hey, we already practiced something like this. So look at this part. We got the sun, the sunshine, then we have the soil. And then we have the seed. Teacher, what is the water? Well, the water is on, it's on the way. 
And guys, so this is one part of the of the presentation of the test. And look at the numbers over here. One, two, three. So it means that we're gonna have three different pages in this part. Let me show you another one. And in this case, uh, this is matching the pictures. Okay, this is matching the pictures in this part. Remember, my dear teachers, I'm showing you the evaluation without a previous presentation of the topic. When your student sees, when your students see all this information, remember that your students already practice this lesson. So this would be something that they can complete. It's something that is not impossible. It's something that is not unseen, all right? Because they already practiced this on the previous class. And over here, we have another one. We have another activity, which is completion. All right, let's say like that, which is completion. And the student will have the chance to complete all of the statement from A to the letter D. Okay, and then we reach to the end, which is another completion part of this activity. Then the student had the option to click on finish. And when it clicked, when it is clicked on finish, no more chances, all right? No more opportunity to go back. And the result will be absolutely saved by our platform, will be completely saved, and you can check them whenever you just want. All right? And now, maybe you say, well, but how can I see the result? Do I get any notification on my cell phone? Do I get something like that? Well, over here, you have the online activities. In this case, you're gonna have all the attempts, okay? When the quiz was opened, when the quiz was closed, all the attempts. And this is like, let's say like statistically, okay? We, you will see how the results of your students were. Okay? You will see all the information over here. Then we have over here, uh, all the name, in this case, first names and last name of your students and the time they took to complete this activity. One hour, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one minute. And so the student didn't read any of the answers. That's why he completed the activity in just one minute. So I'm giving you, or we are offering you a very good platform where you're gonna see a lot of information. Now, remember that we can see the activity, we can see the evaluation, but also we can schedule the evaluation, my dear teachers. So look at this. This is the quiz time. I'm making the uh, the booking of this of this evaluation. And notice over here, I'm putting all the information that is necessary, but I'm establishing a time. I'm beginning the evaluation today at 600 hours or at six in the morning. All right, and then I'm finishing, or this time is finishing tomorrow at the same time, six in the morning so your student can have the chance to complete it in the morning in the afternoon during the evening at night or if they are zombies they can make it during the midnight then over here we continue to the to the other part which is extra lab with the extra lab notice in there that you have a pdf activity it's something that you can download and you can finish it, you can present it as another assignment to your class. And look how beautiful this PDF is. Maybe you say, but it's in black and white. But look at all the instructions are super simple, how to do it and explain your results. With this activity, we want our students to process all the information, to put into practice, to be as a scientist, to make an experiment and then present their results, what they saw, what they didn't see. Even you can ask your student to present what they wanted to see, all right? And well, notice over here, you have the activity over here and maybe you say, but yeah, how can I take a blender to the classroom? Okay, but remember that we are teaching virtually. So you can have the choice to use, uh, you can have the chance, sorry, to use your, uh, your blender and you can make the presentation in your class. But maybe you tell me, Ooh, but my webcam, mm, I think it's not very good in my computer. Okay, that's okay. What about if you record a video? That's even better, right? If you can record a video, you use the instruments that are over here and you can record yourself presenting that and you upload that to the platform because remember the communications, 
with parents, teacher, and students. You can actually uh, upload this video, upload the link of this video, and you can send them as an assignment to your student to check the video and see all the process. So we were giving you, okay, three different options to put into practice the extra lab activity. Then we go with the posters. Let me be honest. When it comes to me, the principal, and he says, Teacher Freddy, you have to decorate the classroom. And I say, oh my God. Oh my God. And I was looking to my partners, obviously the misses, and they said, can you help me? Can you help me? And then, well, I have a very good solution over here. Look at this. We have three options. One of the options is stages of nutrition. Look at this. Uh, look at this poster. Is completely vivid. I mean, you, you can see all of, uh, a lot of colors, and it's not using black and white. Another poster that I will show you, this is another poster that you can put, you can pay, you can actually uh, put on the walls of your classroom, or you can present them just as a complementary material, like a flashcards. And another one, which is the food chain, all right? We can see the chain in the process of food. So we have three posters, depending on the unit, you can have two, you can have three, but in every unit, you always have a poster. And finally, we have the study map. The study map is really cool because I was checking it and I said, okay, I'm not teaching grammar, but okay, how can, how can my student know the process? Or how can my student where he is? Well, look at this part with the study map, we have the opportunity to explain in a better way using the food chain. So your student can see that the composers, uh, the producers, but you know what? We have some empty spaces, of course, because we want our students to complete them. But what about the teacher? Hey, maybe the teacher needs the answer key. Don't worry, my dear teacher, because in this platform, you're gonna have the activity, but also you're gonna have the, uh, the answer key. So in here you have the answer key. Look at the empty spaces. We have five empty spaces. Let me go back for a moment. Five empty spaces. And uh, yes, you, you will see them. And over here, you have the answer key for those, for those words. So the study map and look at over here, new learning science three. So everything that I was showing you in here, you can find in our platform. And this is a very great opportunity for you to contact your coordinator, for you to contact your principal and say, hey, we have a very good auction with Norma. And yeah, why not? Why can't we teach science in this, in this school? So we can start with Norma teaching science. And believe me, um, you're going to have a group of consultant ELT, uh, people who were teachers, who are teachers, who are teaching. And we will be helping you through this process during the school year. We're not gonna leave you alone. Remember that I told you about the attendance, right? Okay, so in the attendance, you had the opportunity to have all your, your, your students according to the data that is given by the institution. So you can see all of your members from your classroom and you don't have to be taking notes. All the information is already over here. And we follow um, the normal procedure to take the attendance list in uh, all the institution we have the letter p which is present then we have the letter a for accent then we have the letter t in, in this case for for tardiness and a g uh, that will be a justifies a justified accent so you see the a teacher I, I was at the doctor i couldn't i couldn't be at the class now please remind oh, in this case try to remember these names because i will let you know the grades Okay, the updating grade. Notice that in here I have the names, the full name of my students. Let me go back for a moment. Over here we have them, all of them. And over here I had the updating grade. So I can update all the grades. I can actually introduce all the grades of my students. All right. And um, I mean, all, all the students that you will see here are the ones given. By the, by the institution. You're not going to have any student that is not on your list. If you're teaching elementary, you will see your students from elementary. 
Then we have the participants. As I told you before, we have over here the students. You can have all the information about your students. Obviously, the username, the password. With this information, you certify that your students is actually using the platform. And I will show you more information. If we click on any student, on any name of the student, in this case, I click on Sara Martin Gomez. Now this in here, Sara Martin Gomez. And it shows me the username, the email, and all the specific information about this student. Obviously, simple information, but in here you certify, hey, this student is using the platform. This student can see the workbook. This student can see the book. So why isn't she uh, participating? Why isn't she in the owner role? Okay, so with this information, you can justify that your student is actually using or not using the platform. Then, just reaching the end of what, what we can see in this platform, we have the activity creator. Noticing here that we can create online activities, assignment, Scrum activities, and also we have the forum. The forum is super cool. If we use it properly, the forum will be great because that is the moment where your students using computers or laptops or even cell phones, they can present their point of view. And you know, in some occasions, we have some students that when it comes to talking our classes, oh, they say, no, teacher, I don't want to talk. No, teacher, they're gonna laugh at me. Well, this is the moment for them to express themselves. Obviously, you will present a topic, all right? It's not something that, okay, go to the photo and, and, and type whatever you want. No, you have to guide them so they can write about the topic you want. How do we create the online activities? Well, this is the procedure, all right? This is the procedure. You present the topic, you present the description, okay? It lets you know about the time. Here, you can select all the activities, okay? You can select the different activities, maybe the instructions, maybe the evaluation, maybe some questions, all right? And finally, okay, we must our students to uh, do like a yoga, something like that, take a breath before, to start, before starting the evaluation, all right? Read carefully each question before answering. So notice that we are giving our students some uh, recommendations to follow before completing this activity. And over here, you had some options. You had some options to prepare your activity. You can actually uh, upload a document if you want to upload any PDF, any PowerPoint, any video. Remember that I told you about the blender that you said, no, teacher, but remember that my webcam is not working well. Well, don't worry, my dear teacher. You can record yourself and you can upload it over here. Okay, as you can see over here, we had some activities we have uploaded to some other examples we've been teaching. Some resources. Now we reach to the part of resources, the common resources, my dear teacher. In here, you will see um, the audience of the book and the student can actually download the audience and you can download the audience and some virtual activities your student can complete as an assignment. Let's go one by one. This is one of the activities to warm up, getting rid of waste, all right? And we had the two options. We had the warm up and we had the activity. We go with the warm up and the student will know a specific information. Do you know that, all right, that babies can use up to eight diapers per day? Do you know that? by ordinating often they eliminate waste from their bodies so if you are a mother and you see that your baby is ordinating a lot don't worry okay according to the science they are eliminating waste from their body if you didn't know this okay so now you have another uh, another reason to check this platform with your coordinator then we have the activity all right, then we have the simple activity. And notice in this part, and it says, which image shows the expression process? All right, remember, my dear teacher, we're teaching science, okay? Be careful with this part. We are teaching only science. And in here, the student has the opportunity to select what is this process, okay? And 
as I told you before, about the audios, about the audios, because we have the CD. But for example, my laptop doesn't allow CDs. It doesn't have the it doesn't have the the CD room. So I, I, it doesn't have the part to introduce the CD or the DVD. So okay, I have the CD, but if, if I don't know how to put it, well, you have the option to download this um, uh, the audios, and you can listen in the platform. It means you can listen in the platform, and you can download it to listen the times you really want. This is another activity that you can practice. Remember that one of the one of the units is animal nutrition. So noticing here, the students will actually select, will play with this activity, and they put it into um, the corresponding places. Then uh, we have the digital book. And look at this part. Hey, do you remember? Do you remember that I show you a poster? One of the first posters. Remember that I show you a pig. Well, so imagine if your student is checking the book the previous day, and when it comes to the classroom the following day, he or she sees a poster with this animal. He says, Teacher, I have this animal in my book. Okay, well, imagine we are face to face classes, but let's imagine we're in virtual classes and you project that poster and you say, Teacher, I have this animal. Teacher, I know this animal. I have it here in my book. All right, so you see the connection? I mean, all of the resources that you will have in this platform are completely connected. A book, okay, in a digital way, notice that in this part you are going to see all uh, the audios. All right, so you can play the audios in this uh in this digital book and on top of this soon the application tools soon has different tools where you can circle square where you can type where you can add information where you can change the color okay well our digital book has those opportunities if you see on top of this part you're gonna have um like different options for you to write or type inside the book for you to select one part that you want your student to pay attention or when you want to circle or simply just to write something on it i give you some example look at over here we have the square okay over here we have the square to select we have the triangle we have the part to underline if we want we have the arrow if we want to point at something in a specific and we have these two symbols, okay, which is the check when they are doing a correct options, and which is the X when the option is not it's not a problem. Okay, so over here, this is the book. All right. And as you can see, it's very colorful. Great. This is another part where you can actually see the unit. I mean, if you are in one part and you want to jump to another one, you can actually do it um, using, um, in this case, the unit one, sequence two, sequence three, sequence four, and so on, depending all the sequences the unit has. So you can jump and go straight to the page you are looking for. And if you see over here, science facts, one of the strategies I told you at the beginning, science facts okay so science facts are really really necessary and just reaching the end of our beautiful presentation and the investigation uh in this platform in some occasions of your classes maybe your student remembers a word in english or remembers a word in spanish and he said teacher how, how can i say this word in english and he tells you or she tells you that word if you say with a um, with a green with a red square, you're gonna have in there four different let's say tools. But the first one and the most important, according to our class, is the dictionary. Over here, you have the chance to English dictionary. You have the opportunity. Oh, the students in this case has the opportunity to investigate the definitions of words by themselves. All right, let me show you. One example, which is wordreference.com. Wordreference.com is one of the most popular online dictionary. 
I personally use it a lot and it's so, so great, a part that is teaching you and it helps you in other languages. But in this case, the student will have the opportunity, hey, if I have a word that I don't understand, I have the chance to investigate this information. And similar like you, my dear teacher, because in this platform, you will see this option. And just in case you're checking a, a word, you say, oh my God, I don't, I don't have it. And you don't have your cell phone right with you. Ha. You can investigate inside the platform. You don't have to go to another website <clears throat> in this way. Well, uh, my dear teachers, it, it was a complete pleasure for me to have this opportunity to help you with some science activities that you can <coughs> that you can put into practice in in your classes. And as I told you before, um, if you want to know more information, if you want to see, if you want to um, let's say have the chance to practice, to taste, to actually evaluate this platform by yourself. Do not hesitate to contact any of our promoter. Tell your principal, tell your coordinator, hey, Norma Publishing House has a very nice book, has a very good platform. That platform has a lot of activity that we can use in our classes. That platform presents the lesson plans that are gonna help us to design the planification through the whole year. And besides, they have people that they can help us through the school year um, so we can prepare classes, so we can prepare activities and they are gonna help us because they are teachers similar like us. This is a great opportunity for your school to have science inside your classes, inside the school, <clears throat> because this is not popular in all the schools around the world. Maybe science and using in English is not that popular at all, but you can change that. So be be sure that we're gonna we're gonna help you. And things like this, you will receive. Apart from the platform, you will receive from our consultants that they will help you and they will go to your class as well. In in this case, they are not going to your school, but virtually we're gonna help you and we're gonna give you everything that we know about science. So your classes can be even graded. Thank you very, very much for taking part in, in this webinar. And I hope to see you very, very soon. Take care. Thank you very much, Freddie, for this interesting topic. Really, really, really nice. And thank you also to all the teachers that they connect. I want to to say congratulations because despite of time and despite of tiredness, you are here with us. I want to say, uh, well, I don't have words to express my thankfulness and gratitude to you all. But I want to mention Jenny Diaz, Evelyn Rodriguez, Janice Gonzalez, Grace Eliana, Janet Vallejo, Odalis Monzon, Valena Perez, Noemi Carrera, Robinson, Maritza, Laura Sanchez, Carmen, Catherine de Rosario, Natalie Quiroz, Carlos Magno, Madeleine, Laura, and well, the list continues, Aileen, Eva, Doris, Daniela, Catherine. Well, we were receiving positive comments from different cities, from Chiclayo, from Trujillo, Pura, Arequipa, Huancayo, Junín, also Iquitos. And we know that the situation that we are facing as a country is not easy, but uh, just to know that we are here is very positive. Finally, uh, we want to share an important video as a last part.